What's up guys, it's Mac. We're back. We are heading out today after some lake trout. It is some extremely cold weather today. You know what's cold and got this alert coming up on your phone here. Don't know how well you can read this, but wind chill is up to minus 50, minus 45. Pretty intense stuff. So we're not going crazy far today, just cause safety reasons. I was gonna go do a backcountry video today, but we're gonna just stay out on the main lake today try to get a giant today we're gonna to try fishing shallow water lake trout see what we can do I'm gonna to try to get out there get this sled to turn over might need to do a time lapse of this because it might be a bit of a process but we'll see you guys out in the lake don't expect any b-roll because it is way too cold for that we are strictly fishing today hopefully gonna lock into a true giant To guess how many pulls? Probably ten. Oh gosh. Oh. shack we got everything set up that was a cold ride out took me probably I'd say close to an hour to get this stupid heater going but we got the big buddy going now just thawing everything out and we're gonna get some lines down there like I said we're gonna try some shallow water lake choke today so we're gonna be fishing in about 30 35 feet of water today we're gonna see what happens I don't think I'll be putting on any deadlines today it is just too cold for that um, maybe if I wasn't filming I'd do it and then I'd just run the fish back to the tent kind of deal but for right now, it is way too cold to be running around with cameras outside and freezing my digits off. So we're gonna stay in the tent, let it warm up, get this steam out of here, and we'll be ready to rock. All right, so we got everything rigged up in the tent. We got all three cameras going, head camera check, sonar camera check, main camera check, I'm just gonna tie up a quick leader here onto my rod and then we're gonna show you these funky baits I'm gonna be using today. Something that's not really talked about a lot in the lake trout world, so we're gonna dive into it today. But first I just gotta tie a little FG knot. I'd show you guys how to tie it, but I don't think you'll be able to see with all the steam coming, coming off me in the shack just cause it is so cold. So I'm gonna tie this up quick and we're gonna get some baits down there. All right, we got the knot done. So I'm gonna show you guys these baits I'm gonna be using today. Today I'm gonna to be trying something crazy. We're going to a black tube jig. We're gonna try some black tube jigs. Drop time tackle sent me some of these to try. So we're gonna drop down some jet black tube jigs and see what we can do. Um, in the lake trout world, pretty much everyone always talks about just the white tubes. So we're gonna give the black a go. See what's happening. So when, uh, this is kind of a little tip for like putting tubes together and stuff. When they come, uh, mostly they're gonna come separate. So what you want to do is you want to put the head inside of the tube. Some people don't know that, so I'm just showing you guys just so you know. Um, so you want to get the head inside of the bait. Um, some tubes come a little bit oiled up, so they're a little bit easier to get in there, but usually you just got to give them a bit of spit. So give it a little bit of spit and get the head inside there. And just line up the best you can all the way down. Just like so. Get it in there. And then all you got to do is just press on the eyelet and it'll just pop right through just like so we're gonna tie that bad boy on get down there and hopefully catch a giant well at least see if they work giving the old ninja tubes a try oh there's already a fish on the live scope here coming in see how quick I can get this rigged up oh gosh hurry 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 <laughs> Well, there was a fish there. Seems to have vanished. 
Yeah, so like the biggest thing in the cold, like when coming up fishing in the crazy, crazy temperatures like I am today is just knowing like stuff doesn't happen quick, you know, it takes time to get the heater going, get everything going. It just, everything goes slower in the cold. It's always doable, but stuff moves slower. So just take your time, don't rush. If you rush, that's when you break stuff, that's when stuff goes wrong. So just take your time, be safe, make sure that uh, people know where you're going. Ideally have cell service or a sat phone, but Tell people where you're going just because in the cold stuff can go wrong. Play it safe. Oh, there's a fish coming in up high. Oh, yeah. That one just missed the tube. Stuck him. It's like right underneath the ice. <laughs> First one on the Ninja Tube. All right, check that out. First lake trout on the Ninja Tube, right in the roof of the mouth. As you can see there, I didn't even cut my tag end off. Still got a gnarly tag on there, so I'm gonna trim that off now. But we got our first lake show of the day. Not a brutal one either. This one's a little bit over slot, I'd say. That 25, 26 inch mark. So I'm gonna send her down there. Hopefully get her great, 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 great grandma. We're looking for the big sow. Another thing too, like I mentioned, is like today we're fishing shallow, right? Like we're only in 33 feet of water. Um, with lake trout, people have this big, uh, big idea that you have to be really deep for them but that's just not always the case it kind of depends on the food source in the lakes like a lot of lakes if the lake are feeding on perch walleye suckers anything like that any shallow forage you'll actually find those lake trout pretty shallow throughout the whole year like i know some lakes in the area up here that the lake trout are actually in like 15 20 feet of water for most of the year because they're feeding on walleye perch even pike whatever they can get their mouth on you know whereas out on this big lake here where i'm at today a lot of them are feeding on ciscos and burbot so usually they're a bit deeper but right now, I'm just trying the shallows because I know that the Cisco's push up shallow too at times. So we're giving it a go, see what happens. The biggest thing with lake trout is just knowing that it's not that they're always in the deep water. It's like lake trout are such a unique fish in the sense that they can be anywhere from like five feet of water all the way down to like 500 feet of water. Like they go through the whole water column all the time. So like I said, just don't get stuck thinking you need to be in deep water or you need to be shallow, you know, like leave your comfort zone try some different stuff and see what happens like that's how you're gonna learn and yeah you're gonna blank out while doing it sometimes but you're gonna find some really cool things and re reap some super awesome rewards at times so it's important to leave your comfort zone and get out and try some new things like the ninja tube and like shallow water there's one coming up here we go a second fish coming into the ninja tube you got to think too like in the shallow water is you don't have as much room to work them up through the water right so you got to keep your bait moving but a little bit more stationary through the water like you, you're not able to reel them up and get them to chase as far because i'm only in 30 feet of water right i don't got the real estate to work 60 feet up through the water i only got maybe 20 feet of water to work up through right i hope that the steam isn't too bad on the camera because it is pretty thick in here big buddy is on high and it is not keeping up so like i said you don't have as much room to work up and down through the water but it is still super important to work up and down through the water in whatever depth you're in because those fish can see from way further when it's up high, right? Oh man, there's two of them down there. I was just pounding the bottom and I just reeled up a bit and I started chasing. Missed them. There's two of them that just appeared right off the bottom. So I was just bumping my tube jig right in the bottom, right in the mud or rocks, whatever I'm on here. And then two fish just kind of appeared out in thin air, thin water, I guess. Thin air, thin water, whatever you call it. Now I'm pinned it to the bottom and I missed him. That one pinned it to the bottom again. Putting up a bit of a fight. The ninja tube. It's getting it done. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Through the beak, Ninja Tube is getting it done. Already getting some nice teeth marks, that's what I'm talking about. Lake Trout number two, this one's a nice fat one. Some nice pretty orange fins. That's another super cool thing about fishing the shallower water is lots of times the fish you get in the shallower water, like I'm talking Lake Trout, are uh, really colored up. This lake, like the Lake Trout that are shallower seem to be a little bit more colored up. And I think that that's just because they're not going through the, the color change, or not the color change, the pressure change of coming up out of the deep water. 
Like I noticed pulling the fish up out of the deep water, sometimes their colors change just because of the stress. So in the shallow water, they obviously don't do that. So I find that their colors stay super dark and super vibrant and you get some really, really gorgeous fish. With honestly like anything fishing, like I'm a firm believer in just using stuff that's not getting, like the, like using stuff that the fish aren't seeing all the time, you know, like just baits, whether it's slightly different color, slightly different profile, but just something that's that they're not seeing all the time will give you the upper hand in a lot of fishing situations, you know? Like the white tubes are obviously killer. I still use them a lot, but just having that bait a little bit different profile, working it a little bit different will definitely get you a lot more fish and give you the upper hand in a lot of fishing situations, whether that's walleye, pike, muskie, lake trout, anything. I'm a firm believer in having a little bit different profile than your other anglers out in the lake will give you the upper hand for sure. Oh, we got a fish that just came in there off to the left side. Come on, baby. Slithered right down to the bottom. Just gonna pound the mud and then lift up again and see if it comes in. Hammered it on the bottom. Might have hooked it funny. I feel like I might have snagged it because it uh, didn't really feel like much of a bite. That was super weird. <laughs> right in the tip of the tail. <laughs> Give it the old tail slap. That's nowhere near your mouth. You silly gaffer. Bit of an odd spot to hook him right in the tip of the tail. A little weird. It's number three though. Don't know if we can uh, count that one or not because it wasn't technically eating the ninja tube but it did somehow fall victim to the ninja tube so you let me know if that counts or not we're gonna call that uh we're gonna call that uh halfer for now halfer the one concept i do like about the like the ninja tube like the dark bait is like how i've mentioned in some videos in the past how i think that just the profile of the bait is so important like having that solid silhouette through the water and with that dark silhouette, or the dark bait rather, it definitely makes a super distinctive silhouette through the water. So I think that that's good because they're able to see it from far away. Um, another way to look at it too is like, black is a really, really good bait, a really good, really good color for baits for pike and muskie and other predatory fish like that. So lake trout aren't far away because they're a predatory fish too. So I don't know, I, like I like the idea of the black bait for them. There's a fish on the bottom rooting around. There's two fish down there right now. Just feathering it up above them. Three fish down there right now. pinned it to the bottom again. It's weird they keep pinning it to the bottom today. I wonder if that's a shallow water thing or if it's a black tube thing. I don't know. Usually I don't find them pinning it to the bottom that much, but today everyone's pinning it to the bottom. Holy smokes. Dude. Unnecessary. Again, don't really know why they're pinning it to the bottom, but Definitely pinning the tube to the bottom. Lake choke number four. Not bad. Fat and stout. Holy rip. I think put the heater out. Add a little bit of meat on there, so I don't know if that's the difference maker or not. But that one sealed the deal. The black. Oh gosh. The black. Tube, ninja tube. That was weird. It's like I sat there for so long and there was like nothing coming through. And all of a sudden there's like three or four fish that just show up there and they're all actively engaging. Like I said, I have a bit of a dead zone on the rocks and I'm having a hard time seeing them right in the bottom, but they're definitely down there lurking around. Like I go down there and bounce the bottom and then they just pin it. 
those are. Holy oh, man, did that one ever pounce it and I lost him. That one hit it so hard. Oh my goodness. That one, that one scared me. That was frightening. Just pounding bottom, I guess, is the way to go. It's kind of boring, but I guess if it works, it works. I'm literally just patting the bottom, like in the bottom, an like inch or two, like just super small little jigs right in the bottom. I'm not doing like one foot jigs, just little tiny bounces right in the mud. The thing I really like about these drop time tubes, um, like I'm just talking like the just straight unrigged ones, is that when you have your knot perfectly straight up at a 90 with them, they stay perfectly flat in the water, like they don't sit at an angle, like they stay perfectly horizontal, so they have a super nice natural presentation. So with these tubes being super perfectly, precisely balanced like that, it just makes them dart around in the water so much better than tubes that aren't uh, evenly balanced. Um, like, And the one thing I noticed with the drop time tubes, specifically to any other company I've, I've done stuff with in the past, is the drop time tubes are like super, like super attention to detail. Like I haven't found any that are like, oh, this one's a mess up. You know, like they're all super clean, super precise. The hooks are always perfectly straight in them. I haven't, I haven't had any complaints at all whatsoever with them. Super high quality stuff. Definitely recommend checking them out. Just had the super aggressive fish just charge in here. Oh man, I hit it and I missed him. Come on, back again. Come on, one more time. Wait, it's coming, it's coming. Stuck him. Fell victim to the ninja tube. I'll teach you. so angry don't be so angry it's okay you lost okay settle down that one came in and crushed it hit it I missed it drop back down hit it I missed it again and then came in and got him suspended no giant but smashing him on the ninja tube it's safe to say that the black tube definitely works I'd like to see a big mama come in and just crush it and that's just a matter of time might happen today might happen tomorrow but it's gonna happen this year we're gonna get it and drop back down there in the hopes the big mama comes lurking you know you're doing okay when your tubes starting to look like this gashed up and beat up so that one there, like I was just sitting at about 20 feet. I wasn't really doing much action with my bait at all. I was just doing some small jigs. And that one obviously seen it from a ways away because I look away for a second, I look back and there's a fish flying at my bait. So obviously it was able to see that that strong silhouette of that bait from a ways away and it shot into attack. And luckily it was very forgiving because I missed it a few times, but we got her up on the ice. It's a start. But always room for improvement. Never forget it. All right, so the day's kind of winding down. The fishing slowed down a little bit. I gotta get back to the lodge. Got some stuff I gotta take care of tonight. Um, taking out some clients tomorrow, but I'll get this video up here as soon as I can. Unfortunately, we did not get the big model we we're looking for today, but we'll be back with vengeance. We're always out here, always cruising for a bruising. Looking for that tank, so we'll be back out here. Don't forget, like and subscribe for more. It'll be pumping out this winter, so stay tuned.